Today I'm talking with Chris Dixon, whose claim to fame is that he once belonged to the same church that I joined in Bedford when I first became a Christian, although our paths hadn't actually crossed until a few weeks ago. Chris, I know that your faith is very important to you. Is it something that's always been there, or is it something that came in later life? Can you tell us about how you discovered and grew in that faith? Uh, David, my mother was a Christian, and I certainly wasn't. I deliberately rejected my mother's uh, desire that I should be a Christian. Um, and I was really angry about her trying to press her faith on me. Um, so much so that um, she gave me a book um, that was trying to persuade me to become a Christian. And I went through it, underlining everything, thinking rubbish, 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 rubbish. But um, life took me to... Uh, Cape Town to work in the heart transplant team with Chris Barnard and at the time that we replaced the heart of a man who was beastly beforehand I discovered that he was equally beastly afterwards and I remember it striking me in an extraordinary way that even if you put a different heart in somebody it makes no difference to them but I subsequently left uh, Cape Town, still angry uh, against my mother's attempt to make me become a Christian, and I went to Yemen. And uh, in Yemen, uh, that's the country where there's this dreadful civil war at the moment, uh, I became ill, and the only place I could go to was a little mission hospital. And in that mission hospital, uh, I picked up a Bible, and I asked somebody if I could take that Bible with me, and I began to read it. And I started going through John's Gospel and somehow the impact of the story had an effect upon me. I was still angry and still determined not to believe Jesus, but I read about him. I then went into Ethiopia and worked with the Red Cross in the famine relief in 1973, I think it was. And one time out in the desert, I saw Jesus. Uh, he was there on a cross, high and lifted up, his arms extended all the way from Cape Town to Egypt. And uh, it changed my life completely. Uh, I came back to the UK and started going to church in Guildford. One night uh, I had a dreadful desire to curse God, awful it was, and I remember crying out to God, please don't let me say that about you. And all I can say is, down came what I later discovered was the Holy Spirit, uh, who took me up and said, listen, this is who I am. Off you go. And I started reading my Bible, and uh, in that sense, I've not looked back, thank God. One of the things you spoke about there was witnessing a, a, a lot of suffering. And I wonder how you have began to make sense of that as, as a Christian. I think when I saw Jesus on the cross, in Ethiopia, in the famine, and the hypocrisy of the situation I was in, I, somehow God told me that he had dealt with suffering at a cosmic level in that death and resurrection of Jesus. I still don't understand it, but in my spirit I knew that ultimately the victory was God's. So what does it mean for Christ to be first and foremost, above all things, as we heard in that reading earlier? Well, I have to be honest and say, uh, as a Christian, I learn more and more about what that means. Um, I, I think it means I haven't got all the answers, but that I can trust God with those questions of mine and that as the reading was today about Jesus being the image of the invisible God, it means I can hold on to Jesus uh, in his ministry uh, of his healing the sick, of his feeding the hungry, uh, of his raising Lazarus, that there's something to hold on to. I don't understand it all, but I've got somebody that I can, that I can speak to and who speaks with me. I'd like to ask you what life has been like in the pandemic lockdown for you and Jimmy. 
What are the things that you've learned for yourself and perhaps for the church? Well, I think the first thing, first and foremost, is that Jesus is not just for Sundays, but that I've learned that he's for Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and throughout the week, and for day and night. I, I, I've really appreciated night times, uh, that time of being able to, I wake quite often at night, being able to communicate with God. Um, I think I've learned not to talk at him, but to talk with him. Um, somebody said to me the other day, how do you know when he says something? And the answer is, I, I sort of don't in some ways, but I do in others. That there's an intimacy with God that I've discovered in this time of lockdown. It's sort of forced me back onto my relationship with God. When you were working as a doctor, I guess that you regularly advise people on taking care of themselves. But I wonder what your top tips are for good mental health and well-being right now. I have to say, getting things in perspective. The danger is, as Jesus said, that the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desire for other things, come in and choke the seed and make it unproductive. And somehow, it's getting to know Jesus better. And I think if you get to know God better, he teaches you to relax and get a sense of perspective, even in the you face of pandemic, if you can get it, fresh air and go for a walk. There's something wonderful about nature, about trees and clouds, sky. Uh, I think companionship with other people, making an effort to get to know your neighbours. Uh, that's one of the joys we've had, getting to know people that we haven't known very well before, uh, making an effort to say good morning to them. Uh, when the postman comes round, saying thank you. Um, we don't watch a lot of television, really. Um, uh, getting to know my wife better, really, spending time with her. Uh, she said to me the other day how much she has appreciated the opportunity of conversations that we've had. I think learning to relax, too, and realising that um, everything that we thought was important before has been stripped away from us now and that we need to realise that actually there is something bigger than our worries about health and money and safety and that's where God comes in.